Let's go! Let's talk about how I made this. What's going on everybody? I'm Quest for Nostalgia. I'm a YouTube content creator. I do a lot of things with 3D printing now and I want to explain how I made this third dimensional builds inspired, you know, West Virginia football Iron Man helmet. So let's get into it. Before I forget to mention that I actually made a Patreon to help support, you know, the channel and, and fund some of these projects to help me grab more PLA and things like that. So it allows you guys to put in some input on things you'd like to see, you know, for us to chat, you guys to kind of see behind the scenes stuff. But yeah, so starting to do one of those. I mean, if Patreon isn't something that you can do, subscribe here and, and just like and comment. Those things really help support the channel and it allows me to grow so I can keep making more stuff and, and really show my projects to more people. So if you haven't seen already on Instagram, there's a guy, Third Dimension Builds, his name's Wes, he's a super cool guy. And yeah, he does these sports inspired, you know, Marvel crossovers, Venoms, Iron Man. And so I was like, you know what, let me see if I can try my hand at it. So I decided to make my own. Um, in this tutorial, I'm not gonna be showing how I embossed the logo there because Wes actually reached out to me and told me that he's gonna do a video about how to do uh, the file embossing there. So I figured I'd let him share with you guys how he does it instead of me kind of showing my process on that. The model is VEC 3D's Mark 42. Um, I don't think I would use the, the helmet again. Uh, there's a bunch of different things that have some problems and I'll show you that as we do the build video. But yep, that's the file that I have, VEC 3D's Mark 42. Uh, if you like the, the look of it, then feel free to grab that model. So let's get into the whole finishing process of this helmet. As always, I start with 80 grit, but this was actually kind of a false start. As you hear, this is a box of a million parts, and that's kind of one of the reasons why I wouldn't choose Vex uh, model again. There is a million and one pieces for this Mark 42, and Iron Man helmets usually are so easy to build. There's a chin usually, a dome, and a faceplate, and this having so many individual pieces was actually way more of a pain. It was a pain to print, um, and it was a pain to actually put together. Usually I show the actual how to set it on the, the build plate and how to print it itself, but there were so many pieces that it would take the whole video. He also does a lot where he puts an ear and an ear together. So if it isn't the best you know, orientation for it to be like this, then you have to go ahead and split it, export two separate ones, left ear, right ear, then put it back in there and move them onto the model separately. Uh, so there's a lot with the, the actual printing that wasn't my favorite and a lot of the pieces are edge to edge without tabs behind it. And so when you're trying to hold things in place and get it all lined up nicely while trying to weld it, it creates a lot of pain points. So there's a few things where I just kind of wouldn't choose this again. But anyways, um, let's go into the weld. I welded it, I got it all together. And the reason why I did that instead of going ahead and doing the 80 grit was because I printed it in white. I was using scrap PLA from a used printer that I had got, had come with some plastic. So I was trying to use it all up and that meant I had to use white and I never recommend using white. You can't see where you're sanding. And so that was really annoying. So I welded it all together and then I spray painted with my empty cans of uh, filler primer, sandable primer, gray, all these cans that were very low. I just used that to cover it with some paint so that way I could sand it off and see where I was sanding. And then finally, I got to use the 80 grit and sand that down. And so I used the 80 grit, I went through, sanded it down after it was primed. And that 80 grit is the first kind of taking down some big heavy layer lines, you know, from the printing process is my first thing to really try to get it smooth. Next step I did was 120 grit. Uh, it's another good one to do before I do any bit of painting, knock it down some more, get it pretty smooth. And then I use filler primer. And so I've been using the Rust-Oleum here, but I've actually just switched to using Duplicolor in my next stuff. So you'll see that soon. But yeah, I lay down a good coat of the filler primer on this and that helps fill in those grooves really nicely. The next is 220 grit. So I sand down that filler primer with the 220 grit. It's getting really nice and smooth now. And then I'm gonna go through and look at all of the things and see if there's any small holes or imperfections that I need, something that wasn't sanded properly or just was hard to get to and use Bondo glazing putty. I used to do that earlier in the process, but now I like to kind of see as much as I can get done with the sanding paper and then add on the Bondo a little bit later in the step. After that's nice and dry and cured, usually I actually wait like a whole day for it. I then hit it with the 320 grit sanding and sometimes I stop there, but with this one I wanted it to be really nice, shiny and smooth. So I really focused on taking it to another step. So I did the 320 grit and then I hit it with the sandable primer after that stage. And then I went upstairs and I wet sanded it to 600 grit. 
and wet sanding I have a love-hate relationship with it. I love it because it really does get it super smooth but it can be almost too smooth to where paint has a trouble yeah, adhering to it or, or running on it very quickly. So when you're going to be doing these painting steps, mist it. Be very light on there or you can even scuff it up with a little scotch pad to give you some more texture back to it. But I feel like that kind of defeats the purpose of wet sanding it, right? And now we're ready for actually starting painting. So I painted it white. Uh, the cheeks of the helmet were going to be white for me the inside of the eyes are going to be white and then yellow also will lay down really well on top of white paint so the letters needed to be white and the faceplate and everything needed to be white before the yellow and so after the white was nice and cured i then also did yellow so i did the faceplate yellow the chin yellow and the letterings on the side of the helmet here all got yellow paint and then of course i was going to mask the letters here so i masked those off and then painted the helmet part blue. Again, be careful with these layers because you're not gonna be sanding anymore. So be very light and misting coats as you go through it. The yellows are gonna take multiple coats. You don't wanna be trying to spray yellow all in one shot. You wanna go for a few coats and build it up because yellow is hard to paint in general. And if you try to hit it heavy because you wanna get good coverage, then you're gonna see a run instantly. And to knock out this nice shine and have a really durable coat, I used the 1K clear coat. I, instead of using the 2K, because that's a two-part thing where you can only use it within 24 hours or whatever, I like to use a 1K. It's really durable. It comes out. The finish is really, really nice. And I don't have to worry about only being able to use that can for one application. I can put the can back down and use it again later. And then we have the eyes. So the eyes are just the cosplay LED eyes in here. They are wired in, taped in, and hot glued in there. And I just routed it about. There wasn't a lot of contact points for it, so that was kind of rough to do. Um, the little lip here, you see there's like a white trim around the eyes. It actually gave me less contact points to glue the eyes into there because you couldn't like glue on there and then push the eyes into it because then the glue would show in the front of here. So I had to kind of like make some like bridges almost. Put the eyes on there and then bridge hot glue over the corners of it to make almost like a, a, a socket to put it into. But I love how this helmet came out. I think I, I nailed it. Um, I actually then in, got in contact with Wes from Third Dimensional Builds and have started helping him with his you know commissions and backlogs and things like that to help other people get some cool sports crossovers. So this helmet has been amazing to help me out and be able to make more projects and, and help more people get cool stuff like this. I've got some other exciting news. I've actually gone ahead and started a Mark 46 build. So I will be doing a full Iron Man suit. Uh, the next helmet that will be done is still going to be the Black Ranger. It is getting very close to being painted right now. Um, but I will be doing a series about how to do a full suit. And as you guys know, I like to really walk you through these things. So it's gonna be a very in-depth guide and I wanna take you along that entire journey. So if you want help doing a full Iron Man suit, this is gonna be a great place to go. Comment down below other things you'd like to see. Uh, is there any other sports crossovers that you think would be sick uh, and, and things that you want to see me do? You know, how what do you want to see about the Iron Man build? You know, and are you excited for it? what's your favorite Iron Man suit? And before I forget, Q, thank you so much for sending the plastic over there. Jacob for sending plastic as well. It really means a ton that you guys want to help me create things and do more of these projects and, and really help me do the full size Iron Man. So that is unbelievable. Thank you, mom, you know, and then also uh, balance. Thanks for being the first Patreon. It means a ton. And I, I'm just very excited that people are willing to support me doing the things that I love and creating things and just being able to use the creative side of my brain. So thank you so, so, so much. I appreciate you guys, you know, more than you guys know. As always, if you made it to the end of the video, you're the backbone of the channel. As I said, like, comment, subscribe. Those things really help me out. The new Patreon is, is awesome. I have an Amazon wish list to help me buy rolls of PLA to keep doing these projects. So in any way that you want to support is absolutely amazing. So uh, I will catch you guys in the next one, and I love you. Peace.